so here's a quick synopsis or my of, of the Amir Locke shooting. Uh, I'm going to find the shooting justifiable, but the city culpable for the wrongful death of Amir Locke. And I think they should pay $50 million and not in structured payments, but $50 million all at once. That's the long and the short of it. You want me to say anything else about it? Okay. I find the shooting to be justifiable because tenths of a second. Much is being made about Amir Locke's good gun handling practices. I don't think they I don't think they serve serve him here. Um much is being made about how the public relations department for the police initially spoke about this. Yes, they should be condemned for that. Absolutely be condemned for that. But the you know the police are the the uh, enforcement arm of the city, so the city's culpable. It's a bad no knock warrants are just generally a bad policy. I understand their tactical advantage. Um, but these, you know, there's questions I would ask. Um, so they came through the door. You know, they kicked the bed. They startled the you know the gun owner. He raised the gun, he raised the cover with his gun in hand. That is not really tactically a thing you want to do. Whether it's the police or somebody else coming there, possibly to do something to you. You don't raise, that's that's an experience. Uh, you don't raise the cover with your gun hand. Amir Locke's not responsible for his death. It was just a poor tactical uh, d decision and an experience. He was 22 years old, I do believe. He hadn't been taught anything. You know, there's a gun being being waved around, and I think they were looking for a killer, but even if it was a drug dealer or, or something else, tenths of a second. Tenths, not not seconds, tenths of a second. By tenths of a second. If I shoot you tenths of a second, two tenths of a second faster, then you could point that weapon at me. I don't get shot. And listen, bullets only do permanent damage. I'm not giving I'm not giving the officer any cover. I just I just I just I you you can't hold him. You cannot. Hold him criminally responsible for what he did. You cannot. Uh, but you can hold the city culpable for that policy. That put that officer there and that officer shouldn't have been there. You can hold that the city responsible. And I say it's $50 million. You're not structured. And every time that it happens after that, it's 10 more million dollars on top of that 50 million. So if it were to happen again, it's 60 million. If it were to happen again after that, it's 70 million, 80 million, 90 million, 100 million. Until that policy becomes so expensive that, <clears throat> that they can't, it, it can't exist. Uh, no knock policy. Why is the no knock policy bad? If you're talking about officer safety, it's too dangerous. And why weren't they behind ballistic shields? You know, I think a ballistic shield should be in every car uh, that law enforcement has for any municipality. From the feds to the state to local, it should be a ballistic shield in every vehicle. Chief of police, patrol officer, detectives, lottie dotty, everybody. Um, and that, that can slow a situation down and maybe mitigate the need to shoot right away. <clears throat> In any event, uh, no knock policies are bad because you'll startle people, whether, whether a gun is lawfully owned or unlawfully owned, you know, they're going to be, if you have one in your presence, you're going to reach for it. You don't know what the hell's going on. 
and that can get you shot and killed. Uh, <clears throat> and if life is supposed to be valuable, then I don't always think that it is, because uh, the world shows you on a daily basis that life isn't particularly valuable. Uh, but if that's the narrative you want to go with, then that's your general belief system. Then you can't believe in this no knock warrant nonsense, especially dangerous in the apartment. Because there's apartment here, there's apartment there, up here, down there, all depending on where the apartment is located. There's someone above you, below you, on the sides of you. Bullets go through walls if something happens. And you want the tactical advantage because you don't want something to happen, but even things can still happen. So, and it shouldn't have happened. It shouldn't have happened. I don't even think they had any credible intel on who was in that apartment at that very moment. Just the possibility that someone could be there. But they didn't know who was there. And you should know who's there. It's a, it's a no-knock warrant. You should have some kind of intel on who's there how many or how many bodies are in there. You should have some kind of tactical information to aid you. And they should have went in there with ballistic shields, which could have slowed the situation down a little bit because they're behind the shield. And you, you don't have to get the short shields. You can get the long shields. And you can really get down behind them and just look out the little peep cover. I mean, the little peephole or the, you know, whatever you want to call it. You can look through the shield while staying completely behind the shield. And, and, and that'll give maybe give it that can slow things down just a touch or just enough so that person can process what the hell's going on if you woke them up in their dead sleep because it always takes time. So that's just my take on it. The shooting is justifiable. I don't find any way I can, I, I don't find any way to hold that officer responsible. And I don't see how anyone can hold that officer responsible. But the city is culpable for the wrongful death. The policy is bad. $50 million. And now the structured payments. $50 million. All at once. Pay the people. And even that won't be enough. Okay then. I'm done with this.